Good morning. Uh, we are going to continue what we have done in the previous lecture, especially we discussed about the risk aversion in the last lecture and uh, we are going to continue the same uh, with a lighter uh, implication of that risk aversion in the wealth case. And uh, this is in fact a smaller portion of this thing which, uh, because I don't want to extend the time of the presentation of the previous. That's what I was uh, abruptly stopped uh, that with uh, without going to the details of the wealth. So let's uh, look into the aspect of wealth. So how this risk aversion is going to uh, affect, uh, affect this case. So it is not necessary to that the risk aversion declines as wealth increases. And uh, when you come to the issue of a diminishing margin, utility would make potential losses less serious for high wealth individuals however diminishing margin utility also makes the gains from winning a gamble less attractive in that sense so the net result depends on the shape of the utility function so once you have this thing then uh, if utility is quadratic in wealth uh, calculation case that is your uw which is equal to a plus bw plus uh, cw square then where you have a b which is greater than uh, zero in that context and you have a c which is less than uh, zero so this is again uh, the pratt uh, calculation we can apply here and uh, the pratt's risk conversion measure is uh, it turns out to be in that sense is rw which is equal to minus uh, u double, uh, double dash w by uw which is equal to minus 2c by uh, b plus 2 cw so the risk aversion increases as wealth increases in that sense so uh, if utility is al uh, logarithmic in wealth then you know that the uw which is equal to ln of w and that's where w is greater than zero and that is you have always a positive wealth in that sense. so the pra if you again convert that in the pratt's uh, risk aversion measure then you can measure that in terms of rw which is equal to u dash w by uw which is equal 1 by uh, w so the risk aversion decreases as wealth increases so now uh, this is also a kind of a, a, a results which someone can easily apply that is the risk aversion uh, decreases as wealth increases so the people get richer and richer they become some more risk lovers rather than risk lovers in that sense so this is a very important ob observation which uh, uh, one can actually have at this point now uh, again if in that sense it is not only the absolute risk which we are talking about which we, we can also reflect the same in the relative risk aversion case so it seems unlikely that the willingness to pay to avoid a gamble is independent of wealth in that so a more appealing assumptions may be that the willingness to pay is inversely proportion to wealth so if that is the case then the relative risk aversion formula can be turned as that is rrw relative risk aversion case uh, which is wrw which is equal to inverse of w u dash w by u dash uh, u double dash w by u dash w in that sense so uh, once you have this thing then you can also compute the same with the power utility function if you apply that power utility function then you can have a uw which is equal to wr by r uh, for r is less than one and uh, it is not equal to zero also so in that sense that, that, that implies that it is actually having a positive value so exhibit diminishing absolute relative risk conversion uh, is uh, a relative risk conversion that is rw which is equal to u dash u double dash w by u dash w which is equal to r minus uh, 1 uh, times w r minus 2 by w r minus 1 uh, that is powered or w it's a power function so uh, powered r minus 2 uh, divided by w r uh, powered r minus 1 which is again equal to r minus 1 by w but constant relative risk aversion is going to be in uh, perhaps uh, formula is that is rrw which is equal to wrw which is also equal to the inverse of r minus 1 uh, which is equal to 1 minus r in that sense so this is how you can basically compute the whole idea of uh, risk aversion in terms of a different formula and uh, uh, case we have uh, summed up to sum up uh, the whole uh, discussion regarding the risk aversion is the following like we have a, a, a 
uh, Newman Morgenstein uh, utility index, uh, especially calculation index, and you have also perhaps index, and we have seen that the relative uh, risk aversion index, etc. So once you have all this thing, then you can actually apply the same to the other formulas such as the power function, power utility function also to calculate the same. So these are all helps us to say that what is actually the kind of a premium one has to pay for actually averting a risk or uh, you know what is actually the kind of insurance premium on the contrary one can afford or one has to charge in that sense. So the, all this has been reflective in the risk aversion understanding uh, regarding this particular uh, thing because we know that the real world is always un uh, uncertain, uh, uncertain and indeed if that is the case then the price for that is also comes as positive in that sense. Again people don't want to lose their wealth uh, because of uh, some unforeseen uh, thing so they also try to get this thing uh, done by in terms of ensuring their own assets and all so uh, in real world it is having a multiple uh, sort of implication therefore the importance of the subject is uh, uh, having its relevance especially in the economic understanding so let's look into the other aspect that the state preference approach in this uh, particular lecture is basically based on that and we have uh, discussed in the uh, previous lecture especially in chapter uh, in the module 4 normally uh, the, the example which we have discussed about uh, the interference of a good and bad states uh, and how people are responding towards that etc we, we had already discussed and it's already been uploaded and in that uh, context we will also uh, basically look into the aspect of uh, this uh, particular problem let us now look uh, as a you know premise which we have already said outcome of any random event can be categorized into a number of states of the world normally we can say that a good world or a bad world or a good state of act, uh, world as well as a bad state of world. So now one, suppose if you have this binary of a good and bad then uh, contingent commodities are goods delivered only if a particular state of the world occurs. That is in the good stage, uh, good state of affair you can have one contingent commodity then the other state you have a different one. So that basically based on that the valuation of the commodity also changes accordingly all right that is uh, for example if you have one dollar in good times or one dollar in bad times corresponds to the other things but uh, we consider only one thing at a time so it is con conceivable that an individual could purchase a contingent commodity so by a promise that someone will pay you one dollar if tomorrow turns out to be a good time so suppose this is actually the statement or a kind of a promise or a kind of an engagement which you are entering into then this good will uh, probably cost less than one dollar in that time because you have to uh, consider the utility analysis uh, of actually the expected in terms of expected value that is assume that there are two contingent goods say wealth in good times that is wg and the wealth in bad times WT, wp we have already proposed this thing in the case of uh, the other uh, context of asymmetry of information and uh, uh, the same can be applied here and then the individual believes the probability that good time will occur uh, the, the probability that as we have started today so with the probability pi that is the expected utility then associated with these two contingent goods uh, uh, is actually BWG, WP which is equal to, so instead of an E, now in this new situation we apply say V and then the probability that is the pi UWG plus 1 minus pi times UWB. So this is what is actually the total outcome someone can expect from this particular kind of a good and bad situation so this is the value that the individual therefore wants to maximize given his or her initial wealth in that sense okay so assume that if uh, th that the person can buy a one dollar worth of uh, wealth in good time 
for PG that is probability of a good time and one dollar of wealth in the bad time of a PB as we have mentioned. So he, uh, in that context his or her budget constraint is going to be a W which is equal to PG WG plus PB WB. That is the price ratio of PG by PB uh, shows how this uh, person can trade dollars of wealth in good times or four dollars in bad times. Okay. Now, uh, now this is actually been done the conceptually. Then uh, what you are doing is that the market for a contingent wealth claims are well developed and there is a good general agreement about the pi price for these goods will be actually fair as we have discussed because as a part of the earlier discussion in the first lectures uh, first lecture we can have this uh, actual fair game problem because that is a pg which is equal to the probability that is pi and a pb which is equal to one minus pi that is the price uh, the price ratio will reflect the old in favor of good time that is pg by pb which is equal to pi by one minus pi uh, which is uh, uh, is going to give a kind of for the risk aversion which we had actually estimated in a different context at a different uh, with a different equation so the same we can see that if the contingent claim markets are fair a utility maximizing individual will opt for the situation in which wg is equal to wb he will or she will arrange matters so that the wealth obtained is the same uh, no matter what state occurs in that sense so if the if the risk aversion of an individual is the case then the maximization of utility subject to the subject constraints requires that marginal the substitution of the dou v by dou v wg by dou v by dou wb that is uh, in the context of uh, in the pratt case which we have discussed that is your pi u dash wg by 1 minus pi u dash wb which is equal to pg by the ratio of the good and bad times if the market of a contingent claims are fair then your u dash wg by u dash wb is going to be one and the same one that is uh, where the wg which is actually equal to wb so the wealth to the good time and the wealth to the bad time remains constant for a uh, uh, risk averse person. This is what is actually the kind of understanding one can immediately derive from this whole understanding or whole analysis. Now once you have this thing then the same can be placed in graphical terms and the individual uh, maximization of the utility on the certain line uh, where WG is equal to WB the uh, uh, the possibility is like this you have a certainty line of uh, 45 degree which is the same risk aversion which we have mentioned in the information asymmetric case also but uh, we can just look into the aspect since the market for contingent claims is actually fair the slope of the budget constraint is inverse that is you have a negative downward sloping uh, and demand curve from the left to so same as the budget constraint is looks like an inverse budget line so once you have this thing then what you have is actually your utility uh, in that point is actually the certainty uh, line as uh, we have uh, derived from the earlier equation that your wb is equal to wg then you have actually a utility which will uh, a tangentiate at the certainty line in that sense. So your WB and the WG is going to be uh, having a sort of a similar uh, case. If the market for contingent claim is not fair, the slope of the budget line is not going to be exactly one. So that is the inverse. Uh, inverse. Uh, it won't be actually. Uh, it would be slightly steeper curve or. Uh, uh, something like that. So once if it is actually slightly steeper curve that imply that uh, you know the certainty line is uh, fall apart from or uh, fall uh, 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 having a distant uh, uh, you know point. So your tangential point would be greater. If it is steeper then the tangential point would be above uh, the left side of the certainty line. That is you have a, always a higher uh, premium which is required. This is what is actually been shown in this line, in this graph.
let's start uh, calculating the insurance in the state preference model so again consider a person with a wealth of uh, say uh, 1 lakh dollar who faces his 25 percent uh, chance of losing his automobile worth of 2000 uh, sorry 20000 and the wealth with no theft is actually wg which is called the uh, state of a good uh, uh, situation that is one lakh and a probability of no theft is actually the prob uh, 1.75. Now wealth with the theft is actually a bad situation where you have actually the value which is uh, 80 and you have a probability of this uh, theft is actually 0.25 in that sense. So if we assume logarithmic utility function of a previous kind which we had already computed and we apply the same thing here. So you will get a 0.75 times WG plus 0.25 uh, times uh, WB. So that is actually going to be uh, the 0.75 ln of WG plus 0.25 of ln uh, WB. So this is what is actually gives the 11.45714. Okay. So now once you have an insurance in the state's preference model then the budget constraint is written in terms of the price of the contingent commodity which we have already discussed earlier also. So again the PGWG star plus uh, PBW star B uh, which is equal to PGW, uh, PGWG plus uh, PBWB assuming that these prices equals the probability of these two states. So. Now you have this thing that is actually like $95,000 in that sense, the expected value of wealth is in that sense $95,000. So the individual will move to the certainty line and receive an expected utility in that sense of $95,000 which is equal to 11.461 uh, Six three of your LN value. So to be able to do so, the individual must be able to transfer five thousand uh, dollar in extra wealth in good times and into a fifteen thousand extra of the wealth in the bad times. So if a far, if a fair insurance contract will allow you, then the wealth changes promised by an insurance, just like the DWD, uh, sorry DWB by DWG, which is equal to fifteen by. Uh, minus 5 which is equal to minus 3 so you have a 3 times case okay, so uh, suppose that is the insurance policy cost which is 4900 but requires the persons to incur the first $1000 to do of the loss in that now if that is the case then you have uh, this calculation and the result and the policy still provides higher utility than doing nothing in that sense so people always have a risk premium in that sense and it has been justified in order to avert the risk so the risk aversion and risk premium is in that sense is connected so if you again apply the same equation in a different format like considering two people each of whom starts with the initial wealth of w star each seeks to maximize an expected utility as we have discussed earlier. So you have a VWG and WB which is equal to the pi of WGR by R plus 1 minus pi uh, WB by VR of R uh, uh, divided by R. So this utility function exhibits constant relative risk aversion in that sense. So the parameter R determines both the degree of risk aversion and the degree of curvature of the difference curve implies by the function in that sense. So a very risk averse individual will have a larger negative value for R in that sense. So this is what is actually the kind. So the curvature will be determined by the R itself. So a very uh, risk averse person. Uh, uh, a very risk averse person from the original curve which we have already discussed a very risk averse person will have sharply curved indifference curve such as a u1 which is a, a this pink line in that sense so uh, a person with more tolerant for risk will have a flatter curve in that sense so indifferent that is u2 u2 for him or her. So if that is the case then uh, uh, suppose that an individual are faced with losing high H dollar okay 
uh, in a bad time uh, the difference between w1 and w2 shows the effect of risk aversion on the willingness to accept the risk so then it is basically moved towards a w from the w star to the next point which is actually the flatter curves tendential point which is w star minus h which is w2 and uh, for the other person risk loving person it's w1 in that sense so uh, uh, that is what has been shown in this uh, particular curve. So with this, let me uh, conclude the whole understanding of the risk and uh, risk undertaking and the risk aversion, um, basically based on the uncertainty principle and risk, uh, you know, calculation. So with this, uh, the the lecture is going to conclude. Thank you for uh, your patient listening, and thank you all.